It's uh, not like any other job I've had. It's like, uh, like a bunch of little boys playing. It's the business I risk my fortune in. I don't want to do anything else. You move cargo from A to B. In fact, basically, uh, a cargo airplane is a truck of the sky. Luxembourg Airport, 5 a.m. A juggernaut of the air awaits the new day. A DC-8 cargo jet, which can carry the equivalent of five truckloads of goods halfway across the world in half a day. This morning, flight Translux 805 has been chartered to take 38 tons of oil drilling equipment to Georgia in the former Soviet Union and the Persian Gulf. The job is worth up to $100,000 to the aircraft's Swiss owner, but the margins are small. You have an airplane, it's costing you money. It's costing you money every day, whether it flies or not. It actually costs you more money on the ground than in the air. You only get revenue per flight hour. The break-even point of an airplane like a DC-8 is 200 hours every month. That means 10 hours a day for 20 days, or about six hours a day every day. That's a lot of flying. Helping Bertram Pohl keep his sky trucks in the air is Richard de Leon, the commercial director. Five years ago, Bertram, a former cargo pilot, sunk a fortune, including his life savings, into the airline. Bertram and myself are the two original uh, members of the company uh, left. We started with one airplane and two crews and basically myself in the office running commercial, running operations, doing everything. There's a bug that, that uh, gets people and it's one of the reasons why they're doing this business uh, even if it's not the big yield uh, profit business. And we actually have a, a humorous saying in aviation, uh, how do you make a small fortune in aviation? It's very simple, you start with a big one. DC-8 Lima Alpha is 30 years old. She's already flown a million miles. Her captain today is the company's most experienced pilot. I feel fortunate and I like to go to work. I have personally no desire to work nine to five in any office and uh, uh, after 34 years of this, I, uh, I'm not looking for any career changes at this time. Levine learned the sky trucking trade with a secret air force. He flew rice and ammunition into remote jungle airstrips in Laos under the banner Air America as part of the USA's clandestine war in Southeast Asia. It was a good preparation for me in doing some of the work that in the oddball places that we go to where you, you know, have more individual decision making. Today's co-pilot is a new recruit to the sky trucking business. Phil Muaris unusually flew tiny prop planes in America before cargo lines spotted him. He's known as Mr. Bean. I've always wanted to fly. Uh, it, always, it hasn't been something I've always said I'm going to do, but it's always been in the back of my mind. And, and I always thought that I wouldn't be able to. You know, I grew up in England in a small town. Who gets to fly, you know? Uh, when I went to my career guidance counsellor, and he said, what do you want to do? When I was 17, about to leave school. And I said, well, I want to be a pilot. And he said, what does your dad do? And I, you know, I said, he owns a fish and chip shop. And he said, well, maybe you should do that. Uh, there's no other way of doing it. The crew member with the hardest job is loadmaster John Jones. JJ must get on board 14 cargo pallets, each weighing between two and four tons. They must be placed to the millimeter to balance the aircraft. JJ is fighting time. He has less than three hours to take off. <laughs> Can you give us a hand with the, the tail stand? Uh, 
The tail pole is to stop the aircraft tipping backwards, which sometimes happens when cargo isn't loaded correctly. Jones has been shifting freight for 30 years. His team are known as ramp rats, but for the next two hours at least, they must work like dogs. We are the freight dogs. We're pushing pallets in and out, and it's greasy, oily, and we're not afraid of getting dirty once in a while. So where are the freight dogs? The flight engineer, John Trent, is another veteran. He flew guns and medical supplies into Biafra during the Civil War in 68. You come on, you do a safety check first, you know. The lever is down, the throttle is closed, make sure the fuel's coming. You're going to put the fuel on, you've got to find out from the, the, the actual office. Cargo line, um, uh, ops. He's just saying now, right, cargo line, ops. So I go on the radio and you tell me how much fuel I want. Uh, John, uh, can you get a zero fuel weight from uh, Jones? Yeah, I can. Hang on. The aviation business is always about fuel loads, whether it's passengers or freight. Scheduled flights can rely on sympathetic air controllers and economic routes. The sky truckers can't. Okay. They must work out the minimum fuel they need to reach their destination, plus enough to divert to at least two alternative airports. The less fuel, the more cargo you can carry, the more money you make. Today's first delivery will be to Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia, once the provincial heart of the Soviet Union, and now a budding oil power. They will have to fly 4,000 kilometers to reach it. The DC-8 will be carrying 38 metric tons of aviation fuel, exactly the same weight as its cargo. Lima Alpha is worth about the same as it costs new, around $12 million. It's an ideal truck of the skies. It's a well-proven machine. It has evolved a bit, but still basically the same machine that was built in the 60s. The design and everything is, is, is working so well that economically they're still feasible today. This mission is not going according to plan. The freight arrived late. Loading is behind schedule, and the crew now have a very lengthy problem to deal with. A very awkward 10 meter box has only just arrived. So uh, we had to accommodate that on the airplane. It's just part of the job. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those things you have to accept and do your best. The box contains a drilling bit. Diamond tipped, it's worth a quarter of a million dollars. It's urgently needed in Georgia, so it must be got on. But not at all costs. It mustn't be damaged in any way. It is extremely difficult to make a, a good living, and it is very easy to fall towards the bad side. So you have to be all the time on top of it. And the margin is so slim that a normal economical analysis would say, no, you don't make any money in aviation. <laughs> when you look at normal gross margins are calculated at least 12 to 15 percent on your turnover, well, that would be absolute dreamland for aviation. If you make your three, four percent, you're making a real killing. We're half an hour late now, you know. So. We're always late when they got these big heavy pieces on, you know. Nothing else about it. They can start earlier, but they don't. <laughs> the crew of Flight 805 have yet another dilemma. 
After delivering this cargo to Tbilisi, they are supposed to fly to two destinations in the Persian Gulf. If they can't get the box on soon, there won't be enough time to reach them today because they must fly over Iran, which can only be done during daylight. A night flight isn't on. The Iranians use missiles. If we uh, don't get moving shortly, we've got a time limit from when we can uh, depart, and we've still got this, these big boxes that have taken so long to get on, we've still got to get off. We might have uh, chicken Kiev for dinner tonight. Yeah, you spent the night in Tbilisi. Instead of uh, some Arabic... Uh, Hummus and Tbilisi. Yeah. <laughs> None. None, please, John. No, just half, no. please. Not one or, or no, just half. Oh, boy. <laughs> Somebody's very specific, huh? <laughs> one tight sugar, one dozen, you know, the old guy. Jones and his loading gang have run out of ideas. It doesn't look like the 10-meter box will fit. How long can you afford to wait? hand out there, you get your But is leaving it behind to any kind of an option? They're going to put it on, they're going to put it on, John. And if we have to end up in Tbilisi tonight, we end up in Tbilisi tonight. Okay. You know? Yeah, okay. I mean, we don't, uh, it's not our prerogative to just shove it off, right? No, you've got to go mad. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So. We're still going. <laughs> the loaders aren't prepared to give up driven by a customer who won't tolerate non-delivery. No drilling bit, no more air cargo jobs. Whatever happens, the flight deck now knows an overnight in Georgia is a certainty. On our 15 late, we only looking like we're gonna get out under two hours. Two hours late. Well, you've been outside. We're, I mean, is it making any progress? made the loading a bit harder on it. They've been struggling to get the box on for almost three hours. Time is literally running out. Francis de Silva is Portuguese. He works for the company which has hired the sky truck. His job is on the line too. We get out of here very shortly. If, uh, if we finally got this thing loaded here. And, uh... Hey, John. Yeah. How long do you think it'll take? Half an hour. Another half hour. Well, that's so much for that uh, being shortly out of here. The titanic effort to load the drilling bit means the crew will now be delivering all their cargo late. Captain Levine uses a mobile phone to fix a new plan with his bosses. It's less public. It's the management's job to revise the delivery schedule, make cargo lines excuses, apologize, and renegotiate a flight plan the Sky Truck can keep to. How long will it take? I can't get through to you on Friday. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. It's not going to be easy. The freighter is at last ready to go. The loading, which originally was calculated at two hours, has taken five. Today, nothing is going right.
The flight is now grounded. They've missed their allotted takeoff time and must sit and wait for permission from the tower to start engines. It may be some time. Yeah, we've uh, asked for a start up and they've just said now it's two hours, ten minutes slot time before we can go. So we requested now um, a, a, an earlier slot if possible. But we could be stuck here now for at least two hours. the paper equals the weight of the airplane we can go. Yeah. The heavy rain has stopped, as has the bad news. Alpha Lima has been given clearance to go. All the electrics are ready to push whenever you are. Did you get push clearance? I Ready on two? Light up. That's five release. Okay, Mark, we've got four good starts. You can disconnect it and uh, hand signals up. Flight 805 must now fly across northern Europe and into Russia before landing in Georgia. At a speed of a thousand kilometers an hour, it'll take them around four and a half hours. The Cold War, a time of intense paranoia, of international intrigue and betrayal. The information that I had was a gold mine. Survival depended on knowledge, and that knowledge depended on technology. You could photograph up to 80 pages. From cyanide to microdots, this is the first definitive study of Cold War espionage and the tools of the trade. A world premiere discovery showcase, Master Spies, Sunday from 8 on Discovery Channel. got better. The new Citroen Zara. Look beyond the obvious. <laughs> the Magnet half too. price sale Ooh. is now on. Magnet. Designed for living, built for life. Centre Parks. For a brochure call 0990 200 222. Food smashing prices make you smile. I like all the personal service. Of course I do. 
The frozen food specialists, after all, great. All that convenience, choice, the quality, very reassuring that farm food's name, and you can't get it anywhere else. Yep, it's all terrific. But if you ask me what's cheering everybody up, it's those smashing farm foods prices. Farm foods will make you. All right, let's go. What are you doing? Oh, we're going for a ride. Come on, let's go. Nobody likes someone who never pays their way. Oh, I know you. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, but if you don't have an up-to-date TV license, no, no, no. that's exactly what you're doing. Have you paid? Have you paid for me? You're watching yeah. while others pay. The seat was free. I haven't paid for you. <laughs> Thanks. No, thank you. Oh, thank you. No, thank no, you. No, 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 no. Thank you. There's one over there. Well, uh, yeah, I know. You don't mind if I sit in? Yes, I do. Excuse me. No one likes charges. That's why at First Direct, everyday banking is free. For cookers, fires, washing machines and fridge freezers at competitive prices, come to the Energy Centre sale. The Energy Centre from British Gas. The right advice, the right price, the right choice. Sale on now. Spine Chiller is a frighteningly good new series. Dad? With super scary stories and strange but true tales, it covers everything from UFOs to alien sightings. Dad? With hauntings, ghost stories and puzzles too. Dad! Plus, every week you get an extra fight. What have I told you about reading Spine Chiller magazine at bedtime? Spine Chiller. It's a dead good read. This Saturday, I'm going to spend 20p on a thoroughbred racehorse. Which is then chopped up, very small, pan-fried, then sprinkled all over the roses. And I open a case of 20-year-old lager. Then go swimming. In a rich cream and white wine sauce. I'm going to cruise down the high street. In a black leather basque. <laughs> and a jock strap. I'm going to go clubbing. Baby giraffes. With a seven iron. However you spend Saturday, spend 20p on the new Saturday Times. Glade Essence of Nature Fragrant Candles Created by Nature Captured by Glade Cargo Lion Skytruck Lima Alpha prepares to land at Port Harcourt in southern Nigeria. Africa is the busiest and most lucrative of all cargo markets. Famine, civil wars and the oil business keep the flyers busy. But Nigeria is a destination the aviators love to hate. The airfields in Nigeria are more demanding airfields than, than the usual. And for operations uh, it is virtually impossible to talk to or communicate to Nigeria. Uh, you ask them, can you fax me this document? And they say, well, we don't have no power. <laughs> For crews, by far the biggest fear is a lack of information about where other aircraft are in the sky. Nigerian air traffic controllers can't tell them. There's no radar. So they must listen carefully to what other pilots are saying about their whereabouts. It's best to listen. For self-preservation purposes, you'd better listen. Uh, in Port Harcourt, uh, I know that they don't have any communication with anybody else. So you only can you can speak to them only when you're within VHF range, which is a fairly you're under 200 miles. Uh, he has no radar. The day that we were there, it was a fairly low cloud base, 800 900 feet, but none of the nav aids were functioning. The lights were not on. When the nav aids aren't working that great, it becomes difficult for the controller and the pilots both and. Uh, we were utilizing our uh, GPS, which is a satellite navigation system, for, the, for positioning ourselves and for the approach. And I did it as a straight-in approach, not getting involved in the local traffic pattern, wanting to stay clear of other aircraft. In my opinion, that was the safest thing to do in that particular situation. And the controller went along with it, and that's what we did. Other flyers haven't been so fortunate. The larger of these two crashed planes is also a DC-8 freighter. The pilot, a friend of Levine's, 
crashed because the Port Harcourt Tower told him he was higher than he really was. Fortunately, everyone walked away. <laughs> Along the edge of the runway are camouflaged anti-aircraft guns, a reminder that Nigeria is not always a friendly place. Cameras are prohibited here. It's also a nation where corruption is endemic. Captain Levine's original plan was to make a fast turnaround. And then we encountered the fact that there was no fuel available for our uh, onward leg. And it was only available on a, uh, a limited amount was available for cash only. And uh, managed to buy a little fuel and then uh, we went on. And thankfully we landed with a little extra fuel. We would have been there uh, for certain a while longer. Sometimes you have to money your way out. Of course, down there they make their own laws. I know one company was asked to pay something like two and a half million dollars to get their airplane out. And uh, I think they finally negotiated it down to about two or three hundred thousand dollars. But for no apparent reason, that's, that's really the political risk. I'm always glad when I hear that the airplane is out of Nigeria. In the air freight business, uh, we fly worldwide and uh, we fly in a lot of airports and places where the, the usual big airlines air, uh, don't fly into. And a lot of them are quite challenging airports. And last year we had a contract to fly to Greenland, so I did the first couple of uh, flights into Sunderstrom Fjord. Okay, we're visual, we're almost on track. Okay. Full flaps. The runway itself is at the end of this fjord. It is surrounded by narrow, steep cliffs. The cliff of the mountain is no, no further than about 200 meters away from the runway. <laughs> and of course, as it's the end of the fjord, you are approaching not only the runway, but as well the end of the fjord, meaning there are more cliffs. So you're completely surrounded and you really have to follow the prescribed procedures to stay within the safety margins of this approach. From a pilot's point of view, I wouldn't have loved to do my first approach in, in real bad weather. The winds that get whipped up through that fjord are something ferocious at times. Uh, I was asking the, I came overhead and I was asking the, I, the landing uh, portion of the runway was covered in ice, so I asked them to throw some sand down there. And this was going on for the longest period of time. And I said, what's going on? And he says, well, the wind is blowing the sand away so quick. It can't stay. I said, well, do, you know, don't throw it into the wind, throw it downwind, you know. He said, that's what I'm doing, you know. As a add-on to the whole problem is that the nearest ultimate is over an hour flight away. So you cannot run approaches for a long time because you need the fuel to get to your alternate in case you, you don't manage to, to land. So basically you arrive there, you have maybe one or two approaches and then you have to go somewhere else or you have to carry so much extra fuel that you lose it in payload. So it, it is a trade-off in whatever sense you, you look at it. The runway itself is at the beach of the end of the fjord. It is relatively flat for the normal person, but for us pilots it's really on the hillside. First the terrain climbs for the first third of the runway and then it gets over the hill, downhill again. When you approach with your aircraft and you're on short final, you suddenly lose about two thirds of the runway from your visual cue. And you say, hang on, this runway is very short, <laughs> mentally. And you have to force yourself to get rid of your feeling and you know this runway is longer than it looks like. And that combined with the cliff right next to it, it uh, gives really strange visual effects on a pilot's eye and it points you down to just do things by the book. As long as you go by, by the book as a professional pilot, there is no problem. But uh, there is no space to play around in, this, in, in Sunderstrom. After landing checklist, please. Okay. Nicely done, Bertram. Hmm? Well, you know, it's the easy ones you mess up, the difficult ones you concentrate enough. <laughs> it's what uh, the profession of a real pilot is all about. 
At 39,000 feet over Russia, Translux 805 is nearing the end of its long flight to Tbilisi. It's flying along a highway in the sky. Air corridors within which commercial aircraft must stay to prevent them running into each other. On this trip, unlike Nigeria, they've been guided by radar and air controllers from many different countries. English is the language of aviation, but it's not always that easy. X-ray 805 is approaching Delta Foxtrot. Please repeat for Tango Lim X-ray 805. Stand by uh, Tango Lim X-ray 805. Tango, your altitude, please. Uh, it's uh, 13,000 feet. I'll give it on meters. Just a second. Tango Lim X-ray 805. Inbound to the uh, Tbilisi. We expect our landing on runway 31 left. The altitude is shown here, 6,450 feet. Since we will be receiving our clearances in meters, that uh, is 1960 meters. It is fairly straightforward, but one must be aware of language problems uh, and the terrain. We've got some exceptionally high terrain surrounding this airport. And John is going to back us up on the meter conversions in case we get something other than what we planned on. The freighter is now on its final approach into Tbilisi. But there's a potential problem. A massive American Air Force transporter has failed to take off as ordered. It now blocks the runway. They are less than a mile from touchdown. 30 seconds flying time. Yet the tower has given landing clearance. And as we got closer, we got to about a thousand foot, we saw a C5, which is very big and very grey. And the runway was quite, you know, greyish colour. So it blended in quite well. Great camouflage. So uh, we saw it and we told the tower, you know, aircraft on the runway. And he said, you're clear to land. So we just kept coming. Ask him if we can make a left turn. Well, I was waiting for it to move, and uh, he ha he was cleared for takeoff, and he sat there for the longest period of time, and then uh, you have to make a decision. And if I were to land behind him, the wake turbulence that he'd have thrown up would have been could have been fairly unstable. Worst scenario, if he would have, say, aborted the takeoff, that would have gotten stopped prior to reaching him. We had no alternative but to go around and give him time to get off and get clear, and uh, any weight turbulence that he would have left uh, to clear away. Uh, we're unable. Tell him I'm going around. Tug me around down there. What's 1,500 meters, John? 4,900 feet. Okay. Well, the U.S. Air Force did it to us. Okay. You have to make a decision and you have to make it quick. Uh, you can't be dilly-dallying. There's a saying in aviation, always leave yourself an out. So you go around, you do it again which is not, not common. I don't think I've done that for a number of years. He's out, right, he's out. Spoilers. The entire crew has been worried by the aborted landing. Technically, a near miss.
Even on the ground, the problems which have been dogging 805 continue. The airport authorities haven't found them a place to park. Now what are we going to do? Well, I think it's they cool. screwed up. We're not going to get by that guy. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it's conference time. Oh, yeah, you're getting by there, yeah. Your wing will go right over his wing. Then all your out. To avoid damaging other planes, Levine is having to risk taxiing with one wheel on the grass. A dangerous manoeuvre when the ground is soft. Like the Keystone Cops in this piece of yeah. junk up here. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> That's a larder, mate. Oh, he's turning left. Yeah, look, at this, look at the tail stand on this one, with all the tires. Oh, bloody hell. Huh? This poor guy is the one getting the work out. Yeah. 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 It was my first time in Tbilisi, but it was obvious their, uh, their offloading equipment was designed for their military aircraft, the Lucian 76s. When the pallets hit those uh, trucks, the trucks were rocking and uh, it was pretty unstable there. The primitive facilities mean more disruption. The problems with the drilling bit box meant the cargo wasn't loaded properly. Everything must come off, including the Persian Gulf deliveries. Yeah, it's about to. <laughs> JJ already knows it's going to be a long night. The flight deck crew have moved into Tbilisi's only major hotel, leaving their loadmaster to deal with the cargo. It costs $300 per person a night here, but it has a bar and an opportunity to talk about the sky trucking business. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. They were kneeling down. Giraffes. They better be kneeling down. They were kneeling down. Giraffes. Oh, kneeling down in the airplane. But the gunny oh, showed brought, brought them on the airplane. Two by two. Two aviators meet each other and they suddenly form a circle somewhere on a total neutral ground. Yes, people working in office, they talk a few words about their office and their office hardships, but aviators will always talk about airplanes all night long. Elephants, you say? Elephants. <laughs> what, in the guppy? And they're all baby elephants. Oh, baby elephants? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby elephants. In the guppy? No, no, and they're all way about <laughs> yeah. two ton each. Yeah. We've got 14 of these things on board. Like, but what this guy says, the agent said, the 14 elephants is 28 ton. And we're putting this <laughs> fourth ton of sugar cane on board. We said, yeah, well, that's... 32 ton. He says, oh, no, 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 they eat it. <laughs> he says, <laughs> no way. <Yeah. laughs> he wouldn't have it. We wanted a, we, we had to knock two elephants off. We were eating tail, right? It's overweight. It was unreal. It's Indian. No, 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 no. Brilliant. Amazing mind, Chris Discovery Channel's definitive series, Master Spies, continues next week. Espionage can become addictive. The CIA exposed. The best people to work with are criminals. State-of-the-art spy technology. The use of mind control and political assassinations is pretty much standard. Master Spies, all next week at 10 on Discovery Channel.
The new Seat Cordoba Vario. We've added to our family, so you've got more room for yours. Seat. The best you can do? It's only a letter. You're not trying. See how interesting you could make it. That looks complicated. It's easy. Now, shall we email it? I don't know how. Look, why don't you get PC Know How? It tells you how to use the internet, how to organise your finances, how to do everything. And every week there are step-by-step -step projects to practice on. With PC Know How, you might surprise me. I will. Now I can breathe, I can see, I can just, I can feel, I can taste all the sugar sweetness in your gears. You give me all the things I've ever missed. I've never found like this. I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. <laughs> understand that some people like to share. TalkShare Plus lets two or more people share one talk plan, one bill, and cheaper calls. The future's bright. The future's orange. Good morning, Puppet Patrol. Your mission is to ensure that every home has Andrex toilet tissue. As you can see, Andrex is so much thicker than ordinary toilet roll, and because it's thicker, you need less. Get down, lad. You must never rest until your work is done. Oh. Good luck, pups. Remember, Andrex is thicker, so you need less. Introducing Glade Essence of Nature candles with special blends of fragrances inspired by nature. Create relaxing moods with peach. Fragrant spring potpourri and inviting magnolia and vanilla. Essence of Nature candles. Created by nature. Captured by Glade. I heard this noise. Just a minute. It's a strange world. But if you want to find out what's really happening, watch Discovery Channel on Fridays. It gets stranger by the minute. This is reality. Be there tomorrow from 9 on Discovery Channel. Eight AM to Blisi. As Flight 805's crew gather for breakfast, they are faced with further delays. We uh, were supposed to get up at, well, we did get up at 7 o'clock for a, uh, what was it, 8 o'clock departure? And uh, we got a message saying there was going to be a delay to at least 12. Um, basically because poor JJ is still out the aircraft uh, unloading from yesterday. So um, JJ's had his work cut out for us today. He'll be tired. And, uh, so basically, when we, when I called this morning, they told me at reception that they were just uh, ready to start loading. Uh, they'd taken, what, seven, eight hours to offload, which is what he said. They said it'd take two hours, he said it'd take all night long, mark my words. Mm. And we chuckled. 
<laughs> we, we oh, slept. mighty warriors. Yeah. <laughs> we had a nice sleep, Jaggy has been slogging away. Poor bugger. Hey, here's the love master. Here's the love master. How about you, Jarvis? I'm very close. Okay, you sure you don't want to come in? How about that? Should I bring you something to eat? Cheese sandwich. Anything else? <laughs> well done. Okay. Okay, John. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay, bye bye now. Okay. He's got two more pallets to go. And we'll give him a bite to eat. And we'll be on our way. Yeah. You sure, eh? Because the airplane should have been there an hour ago. The airline's op center cannot contact the hotel or the crew. <clears throat> International phone lines between Tbilisi and the rest of the world have been down for the past 10 hours. The airline doesn't realize its plane is stuck in Georgia when it should be airborne to Sharjah. <laughs> and uh, we don't know what else to do. Oh. Well, we've got till 14 C before we have to be out of here. So yeah, today. Today. <laughs> As opposed to yesterday. It was because we have to be in and out with Iranian airspace, which closes. And I think 18 C it closes? Yeah. yeah. We don't want to get you know, into any trouble over Iran. That's why we have the 14 C limit, which we might make today. If not, it's back to the bar tonight in Tbilisi. <laughs> and 14G tomorrow. Bring your own sandwiches. That's correct, yeah. Is he there? No, he's not. What, any idea what time's coming in? Oh, nothing, huh? Okay. Thank you much. Bye-bye. Movement at last. Word has come from the airport that the reloading is almost complete. It's always to do with the loading that you get caught. Very seldom is it maintenance or anything like that. It's normally caused through. They just haven't got the equipment to get the stuff off or, or awkward pieces on the airplane. And base never think, they think that everybody in the world is the same as they are. And it's not, they have to be tolerant. Very tolerant. Poor John, he's naked. Yes. Angry. Yeah. He's hungry. He's un hungry and he's angry. Well, did, was that a sandwich for John that you made, yes. Pete? Yeah. yeah. Where's the new from the uh, on the. I just called the tower in Sharjah. See, normally what they do before a flight departs from a station to another station, they send an ATC flight plan all along the route. And uh, I called Sharjah Tower to see if they received a flight plan, and they haven't. So that means he still has to be in Tbilisi. <coughs> this is Tbilisi Airport's Flight Control Center. It hasn't changed much since the days of Georgia's most famous son, Joseph Stalin. Captain Levine needs someone to file his revised flight plan. Well, I think he's trying to find the right office or talk to the right people in regards to filing a flight plan. So we've got to get the, an ATC flight plan filed that coordinates <coughs> this country, Iran, United Arab Emirates, to clear us through these three, three countries' airspace. Yeah, yeah. 
Without it, he will fall further behind the clock and customers and managers will become even more anxious. Where you cross the Georgian border from the northern part to Europe, from the Black Sea down, Zabada, Zabada, Zabada is a Here's our, our file of Rudy. It's right here. The departure. We well, we, this was issued yesterday. So they were probably copied on it. Because we were supposed to leave yesterday. This is the company's Georgian agent. He hasn't had much rest either. But then it's his job to sort out the mess. Well, it was yesterday. That's yesterday, okay. But we'd like to go like a 1000 Z now. So we could do it. We have to change uh, it. The, the 940 is suitable for you the thir after 30 minutes. Departure. Well, if we can get our MET report and get over to the airplane yes, and get the equipment, the, can you get that all there? We can go. We have 40 minutes before blast off. Out on the tarmac, there's tranquility. JJ is already on board. He hasn't yet had breakfast. Hello, John. Hang on, you got a smile. Oh, Your picture's wonderful. being taken. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chef Renardzi, the uh, Georgian Prime Minister, that's his aircraft right there. You can tell it's his because it's the only one not covered in dirt. It's nice and clean. You really do have to change his shirt. You mean you own two shirts? I've a lung master who owns two shirts? Out with ten. <laughs> Been on the road for a week. Okay, you can pull the air and the ground down. Finish with the air and the electrical. Okay, we're standing by. You tell me when it's clear. You can pull, disconnect the air and electric. One minute you're in Kuwait, next minute you're in Accra. It's just something different every day. And it never gets old. It never gets boring. And sometimes it's very exciting. Hey, our tuna. In my flying career, I've never had a job that would let me live at home. I have no regrets, but uh, I would like to spend more time at home. It's this bug called aviation that gets you in. It's the business I want to be in. It's the business I risk my fortune in. And I don't want to do anything else.
Cargo Lions DC-8 Lima Alpha has clocked up another 11,000 kilometers of flying time. Loadmaster Jones was on duty for 53 hours. In less than five hours, another crew will take this sky truck and a new cargo to distant and difficult places. It's, uh, it's quarter, to, uh, it's quarter to one, Luxembourg time. Uh, I'm all bloody tired, but mission accomplished. Uh, Tango Lima, actually 805 is two miles approaching the outer marker. Are we clear to land? 805. Tango Lima, actually 805, are we clear to land? Unable, going around uh, from 805. 805 is going around, uh, like to make a left turn if able, 805. 